Hello, Legion. It's Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play Stellaris Ancient Relics. This episode kicks off the daily Legacy of the Forerunners series, and it features the Ancient Relics story pack and 2.3 Wolf update coming June 4th to Stellaris. My thanks, as always, to Paradox for entrusting me with a preview build so I could bring this content to you a little early. I'm going to do a quick and dirty rundown of the new content introduced in the story pack and patch, then talk about the Empire setup and game setup as usual before we get going. Timestamps are listed along the bottom of the video to help you hop, skip, and jump to where you'd like to be. Ancient Relics is, of course, not a full expansion to Stellaris. Stellaris has three tiers of paid DLC content, the lowest and least expensive of which are species packs, which add new ship designs, logos, and portraits. The highest tier is made up of full expansions and Ancient Relics, like Leviathans, Synthetic Dawn, and Distant Stars before it, is part of the middle tier of Story Packs. Story Packs add flavor and depth to the existing game without overhauling existing systems too dramatically or introducing entirely new layers of gameplay. And living up to its namesake, Ancient Relics fleshes out the exploration process inherent to the early and mid-game by adding obtainable and discoverable relics with unique active and passive bonuses, a story-based archaeological system that more actively engages the player in the process of discovering their galaxy's past, and other elements that give the game a richer sense of history and storytelling as each game of Stellaris progresses. Like any major Stellaris release, Ancient Relics is accompanied by a free content update that owners of the base game can also enjoy. The 2.3 Wolf update, named for Gene Wolf, author of the Solar Cycle universe, helps bring the new layers of polish introduced in Ancient Relics to the base game's story and discovery content, while also introducing a much-needed update to sector management mechanics. Notably, this is just a first pass at what we can assume is a longer-term overhaul plan discussed in Stellaris Dev Diary number 142. I'll link that in the comments if you want to take a look at it. Also notably, the Wolf update makes Stellaris an exclusively 64-bit application, so anyone still running on 32-bit operating systems will need to upgrade at this point if they want to play the newest versions of Stellaris. A number of other balance, performance, UI, and AI updates have been implemented as well, along with improvements to modding and, of course, plenty of bug fixes. So jumping into a new game here, those of you who were around for the Dynastic Divinity series where I played as the Divine Orinathi Hierocracy might remember that I mentioned at the outset of that series I would like to play in the future as some of the offshoots of the Orinathi society and species that I had designed but that hadn't yet played as on YouTube. And we are playing as one of those offshoots in this particular playthrough, the Orinathi Technoclave. The dawn of the Technoclave would be regarded as the greatest schism in the history of Orinathi society. Driven to escape the shackles of the Stellar Nation's corruption, a sophisticated secession plan led by an enclave of Orinathi inventors and innovators would fatally fracture the government of Orin. The dramatic response from the world government, a total abolition of religion in a short-sighted attempt to prevent a mass exodus of the planet's foremost thinkers would serve only to reassure the fledgling Technoclave's members in their act of secession. Mystical stories and empirical truth are each our beginning and our end, wrote first oligarch Tok Arleth as Orin faded into the background of stars. Let us go forth from here to better understand one another, by rigorous study, by fervent regard, to discover the origins of both. So, just like the Orinathi stellar nation from which they originate, the Orinathi Technoclave is still an oligarchy, at least at their outset here. They are, however, a technocracy because they're very focused on scientific advancement, but also because this is a series about ancient relics and discovering kind of the history of the galaxy. They're going to be just going out and researching whatever they find, whether it's mystical or empirical in its nature. And of course, they are also cutthroat in their politics by virtue of just being a young, fledgling nation. Their edicts are cheaper, and in order to compete on this new political stage, they just have very cutthroat politics. That's the way that it is. So those are the two ethics that we have set up to get started. They're, or rather, those are the two um, civics. Our ethics are pacifist and fanatic materialist. Now, I went with pacifist because it gives us a little bit of extra administrative capacity, so that's a little bit more room to play with in the early game in terms of expanding. It's not a ton. I mean, plus 10 is not a lot, but it's there. The stability boost is really nice, though. And the reason I went with Pacifist is that, again, we are going to be focused on exploration and mainly discovering what the galaxy has to offer. It's not to say that we won't fight anyone, but we will not be going into this with a warlike mentality. This is a, a story pack that is about exploration and archaeology and galactic history. So that's the approach that they are taking. Also, again, because they are 
more technically, scientifically minded people. They're not necessarily focused on going out and conquering everything. They want to explore and, you know, research and stuff. So, also fanatic materialist. By the way, technocracy in this newest version, 4.3 of Stellaris, is embedded behind the fanatic materialist ethic. So, unless you're fanatic materialist, you can't be a technocrat anymore. But fanatic materialists, of course, will give us a little bit cheaper robot upkeep and faster research speed. We also have research speed increases from our intelligence, the Ornathi species bonus. And by the way, the pacifist bonuses. Oh, already talked about those. <laughs> so anything else here? No, not really. As an oligarchy, we will hold an election every 20 years to select a new ruler. Again, intelligence is giving us some research boost. They are sedentary, so they grow not quite as quickly as other races. Their resettlement cost is also more expensive. They use more housing as well because they're a solitary species. So we have some negative traits that we're going to have to modify out in the future. But it's always fun to play Stellaris that way because it gives you something to go for in genetic advancement. And because this is a technologically centered race, obviously that's something that we would go for. A research centered race. They are traditional, so they generate additional unity from jobs. And then they are conservationist, so they will use less consumer goods, fewer consumer goods than the average species. So let's go ahead and go with the Oranathi Technoclave. Of course, we are playing on a huge galaxy because we want to see what the new 64-bit Stellaris and the performance improvements can do. So four arms, which I think is a little bit different from my typical. I usually do a two arm to kind of simulate the Milky Way. We're going to do a four arm spiral. Seven to 15 AI empires randomized. No advanced AI stars. Let's all just start on the same playing field, please. Fallen empires, two to four, randomized. Marauder empires, one to three, randomized. And then, of course, tech, habitable worlds, and primitive civilizations will all be at 1x speed. Crisis strength will be at 1.5, which is a little higher than I typically set it, but hey, let's have some fun. Speaking of that, we are playing on Commodore difficulty, which is one level above kind of the Captain basic level. It's If, you, if you're a Civilization VI player, think of Captain as Prince difficulty and Commodore is like King difficulty. Kind of. Sort of. Okay, moving on. So scaling difficulty is off. AI aggressiveness is normal. Advanced neighbors is off. And empire placement is totally random. We don't want to have any clusters whatsoever. I do have some slight modifications just because I've found that these are kind of appealing. Just to slightly reduce the number of wormholes and gateways that pop up, make it a little bit more aesthetically appealing and maybe realistic. Uh, this is what we're going with. So we have a standard hyperlane density, but then a half abandoned gateway density and a three quarters wormhole pairs density wormhole pairs density words guaranteed habitable worlds is set to two so we will definitely have two worlds that are of an ocean type ocean world now Vodris, their capital world is an ocean world within some you know within a few jumps of our starting location the caravaneers will be on and then which you can now turn that on and off by the way if you didn't see that in the patch notes and then iron mode of course will be off because it's super tough to play a let's play on youtube episodically especially daily we have when you have iron man turned on so no achievements but that's okay let's jump in Okay, so let's go ahead and skip past that because we've already told our own backstory, so to speak. Before we unpause, we have some decisions to make. Let's make some research decisions first and foremost. Vabrig den Hulos is our very first physics researcher. Barim den Pirium is our very first society researcher. He is maniacal, so he's getting a 5% boost. And it looks like uh, Berm den Palosh is our engineering researcher. Now, I kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to switch the researcher with higher experience gain to society research, but all three are going to give me important technologies in the early game. It's just that society was is going to lead towards things like pop growth and um, food production, the ability to just, well, support the population. And as the population grows quickly early on, that can potentially bolster all of them. So I don't want to overthink. I don't think I'm going to chase that particular thought, but it's worth thinking about just as a beginning Stellaris player as a piece of advice. So let's see, let's start here. Oh, we don't have the option to improve our physics research right away. So we can just do better research stations from the outset, or we can do the capacity overload edict and energy grid building from the outset, which I also like, or just better shields. Where are we, by the way, before we make any of these decisions? Oh, wow. Okay, we are way, way out on the outer edge of this forearm spiral, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. 
So it looks like our home sector has been named Oxygen 3B. Let's go ahead and rename this very quickly before we do anything else. We'll jump back to research in a moment. And we'll talk about the sectors and some of the changes that have been made in this most recent update as we dive into this first episode and the next few. So let's just, this is the core sector, so let's just call it the core sector. Or even better. So the sector system works a little bit differently in that obviously there are differences that we'll discuss, but one of the major differences is that in past versions of Stellaris, when you would have your core sector, it wouldn't appear to be a sector. It would just be this kind of unbordered section of your space that wasn't bordered like the rest of your sectors. It was this unique area that was your core sector. Now it it is its own sector and you have to you can rename it to whatever you want, as you can see, and you have to manage it, uh, not quite in the same ways as other sectors, but it just, the, the unbordered planets and systems in Stellaris now are the frontier planets that haven't yet been incorporated into sectors. So functions a little bit differently, uh, though not entirely differently than it used to. Anyway, back to research. Let's see. I kind of, there are some research stations in the Vadris system. So I'm kind of tempted to... Let's go ahead and say better research station output to begin. And then we want to go for, as tempting as these others are, let's go for a monthly unity boost as soon as possible. And then Bermed and Palosh is going to research extra minerals from jobs is handy, but also mining station output plus 10% and the ability to mine nebulas. Let's go for zero G refineries out of the gate. And before we do much else aside from those things, let's look at our species rights. Of course, citizenship, full living standards. We're going to set this to academic privilege because that's just what we would do as, I mean, given the backstory of the Technoclave. So this will slightly change our upkeep in terms of consumer goods, but this prioritizes the educated population to the general benefit of the sciences. From a role-playing perspective, it makes sense to go that route. So that set up, let's also go to policies and... Obviously, since we are pacifist, we can't do unrestricted wars, but we can do liberation and defensive wars, selective orbital bombardment, allowed resettlement, peaceful first contact protocol, open initial border status. Now, we could go for different food policies, but I'm not going to make a change on that until I have a better sense of what our initial colony situation is like. Economic policy, uh, currently we have a mixed economy, so there's no bonuses or penalties to consumer goods or alloys, and I'm going to keep that as is for now. Trade policy isn't wealth creation, so every point of trade value simply becomes energy, period. We can convert that to more complicated mixtures later on, but we're going to stick with that for now. Robotic workers allowed, population controls allowed, slavery is prohibited, and the purge is for displacement only. So, we got stuff to do. Let's jump back to the Vajra system and have a look around. Let's see, we have uh, some minerals that I need mined. Let's go for that first, and then we're going to need that second, just to make sure our energy stays nice and high. And now on the planetary capital, we have a planetary administration, research labs, alloy foundries, and civilian industries. We don't have the option of building anything just yet because we don't have the minerals for it, but I imagine what we'll do first is an autochton monument, or perhaps additional alloy foundries so that we can have more production early on. The only reason we wouldn't do that is if I felt like for some reason we didn't have a lot of minerals around us to begin. So our science ship is here as well. I'm going to do my usual thing and give some movement orders first and foremost. Actually, you know what? Let's do this slightly differently. I want you to go to all the neighboring systems first and then to the outlying systems. And we're going to keep an eye on them as they move around. We'll turn the speed up and we'll have them first look for worlds that should be colonized. Then we'll give the order to survey. Once we have a, a few of those underway, at least one or two worlds discovered, I'll just have the science ship survey more normally. Okay, so a little bit... Yeah, we can do some additional building here, but I don't think I'm going to do that just yet. All right, one of the things that I can do... All right, so the Cabandor class... I don't know if I like that as a design name. Just some initial setup here. Rangdur. Simbarian. I like that a lot more. But we can go with that as the basic frigate design. Let's remove that one. 
And then the defense platform, Socratarian, uh, we can go with that, I guess. Which we're not going to mess with those for the moment, but I will go ahead and design a missile corvette for general usage. And let's put a laser on the front of it. Deflectors, nanocomposite armor, and done. All right, so... Zimbariant and Cordorian, I like it. There's some subtle symmetry there. And now let's go to our setup. I just want to have some additional Cabandor uh, for now. Actually, no, these are going to be retooled, aren't they? Because I didn't like that name. So let's refit these to be Simbarian class. And then we do want to have five of them. And I will go ahead and give the order to upgrade. Not quite yet to retrofit. Okay. Let's jump to speed three and watch that science ship zip around for a bit. Of course, the Vodris system, well, for role-playing purposes, let's take a look at our home system before we let too much time pass. I don't want to get ahead and jump into more high-level stuff. So Nel Vodris looks like is a moon around the gas giant of Paragima. There's a smaller moon, a barren world called Gandara. Doesn't appear to have any special modifiers. I don't actually see any, but let's have a quick look. Or we can use the expansion planner. That works too. If I remember my hotkeys, which is the expansion planner. Oh, it's F5 now. That's right. All right, so nothing at the moment as far as Mars-like terraforming candidates, which makes me sad. But that is the home system of Vadris. We have a... Which class K? Class K star. There we go. All right, now we do have a little bit of unemployment on Nel Vadris, so we're going to have to do some additional building here. I would say I will need an additional energy district before long. Project concluded. So the Kermandor completed the construction of a mining station or in orbit of that place. My science ship has... You know, the last time I booted up a game, it did this. I'm not quite sure why. But it straight up stopped doing what I told it to do. Which is just not very considerate. Try again. Thank you. Alright, so additional mining station. That will give me the additional energy there. And now we are going to watch that science ship zip around. Hey, found one. Okay, so let's go ahead and give the order. This is a control shift click so that I will have Obnal surveyed, and then it will continue hopping around looking for additional planets like that. So our primary objective with the science ship is to find planets and survey those. Colonizable worlds concluded. and survey those. Well, not necessarily colonizable, but worlds that can be exploited for our purposes. Let's put it that way. All right, let's get those two research stations built. We're gaining minerals fairly quickly, which is nice means we'll be able to build our new energy districts before long. Also, our additional... Yeah, let's go ahead and do the Autoton Monument. This thing is going to generate unity and society research, turns out. Nice. So that's two job slots. And it will require some additional upkeep in consumer goods, so I'll have to keep an eye on that as this thing builds. That's a bit of a staple of Stellaris. Whenever you first start a new world, you probably need to have the Autoton Monument up pretty quickly. Even though the systems have been dramatically overhauled since 2.0 and 2.2. What do we have here? The ISS Telerian has made a startling find on Omnil 1. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Nelvadris. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Omnil 1 are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out here. So we got some society research from that. But yeah, you generally have to get that building up first even though things have changed a lot. The Oronothi technical have is abuzz with news of the alien organisms discovered some time ago. While far from intelligent, there is life out there. Construction Indeed. project concluded. So it looks like Obnil 1. System survey concluded. 
Ah, we've got our first anomaly here. So a lot happening relatively quickly. A small rectangular object on the surface of this planet is deflecting all scanning beams like a mirror. Our sensors are unable to determine its material composition. Let's research that. We have our very first tradition available. Now we can go for discovery since we are, you know, this technoclave. So from a role-playing perspective, we would do that. But I'm going to go for kind of a standard approach. This is a... A lot of you are probably watching because you want to see what a standard kind of beginning of a game looks like because of this new content that's been added in Ancient Relics. So let's just go with something that'll help us establish more colonies and get our feet under us in terms of... Well, I'm kind of contradicting myself, aren't I? <laughs> because if I really want to focus on what this expansion is about, I would go with Discovery first. But expansion is one of the primary, you know, beliefs that you would go with first, or traditions that you would go with first in order to get your feet under you early on. You can go with Discovery first, there's some back and forth over which is best. You can really do either, but in this case we're going to stick with construction expansion. project concluded. Now Vadras has finished its construction queue. Very good. So let's go ahead and build a starbase in Obnal, because it looks like we have some society research to be gained there, which is quite nice. Also, can I go ahead and build that yet? Not just yet, but soon. One more month. And then that unemployment situation will no longer be a situation. Build. At least, not for a little while. We do have slower pop growth, so that'll help unemployment from being too burdensome early on. We now know, without a doubt, that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Nelvadris. Well, duh, given the backstory. <laughs> That's one thing I wish you could configure a little bit more. It'd be very complicated to do and, well, probably impossible. But if you're designing kind of a custom race, like to what extent can you say, you know, we know that there's life out there already, you know, to where some of this narrative stuff doesn't pop up. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing, World log updated. initiative. If you're just watching my series for the first time, I'd like to read these for the first few episodes for people who might not be familiar with Stellaris and who want to experience the full detail of some of these events. Uh, as we get through deeper into the game, I will read them less and less. While conducting surface scans of Obnal 5, Science Officer Feldum Den Paloche and the crew of the ISS Talarian discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not yet detected any other signs of alien activity on this planet, and exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We have prepared a special project to translate the text. Situation Good. log updated. Let's go ahead and translate the alien mural. Mural, excuse me. We do need science ship in orbit. So we're going to have him research that really quickly. So tell you what, one thing I want to go ahead and do is get an additional science ship building. Comet sighted. A small celestial object with pronounced gaseous and particulate tails was recently observed in the Vadris system. Its passing was uneventful. Okay. <laughs> Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence, reads a popular Newsnet post on Nelvadris. The people of the Oranathi Technoclave are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from other stars continue to elude us. The report on traces of alien life that were recently found seemingly only add an ironic twist to the situation. Remarkable. All right, so we've got a science ship building. I'll also get an, an additional construction ship construction building project and give the order to reinforce the fleet. I do have the energy to recruit a new admiral. So let's go ahead and go with Gordrig den Adazga because the fleet logistician trait would be handy. Okay, we now have an admiral for those ships. We do have both a building slot available now and some unemployment. So we, oh well, I need to wait until I can build something there soon enough. Tell you what, before I spend anything on building those platforms, I do want to get something going on Nelvadris. I think what I'm going to do is some additional alloy foundries. So we're going to wait a few months here as our resources build up. Construction project Because we have a pretty decent mineral surplus, and I want to turn some of that Special into an alloy surplus. Concluded. Science officer Fildurm Den Paloche has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Obnal 5. The text contains a staggering amount of data, and the mural evidently serves as some sort of low-tech library. It describes in broad terms the collected technological knowledge of an alien civilization that dominated this region of the galaxy some 80 million years ago. A lot of it is already known to us, but the data does contain several promising leads for technologies we had yet to consider. 
There's enough data here to keep our scientists busy for decades, but we will need an orbital research facility to continue the translation efforts. Intriguing. So that's a universal science boost once we have that particular system in our grasp, which we do. It's already been added. All right, so leaders gained a level, and finally, that science ship is on their way. Let's see. We need to wait for 400 minerals before we can do much else. Concluded. But let us... Interesting. So we have a statecraft researcher I can hire if I replace the one. Eh, I like your research speed boost, though. That would help with the current project that we're doing, but I'm not too concerned about that. So why don't we... Also have Spark of Genius. <laughs> Let's go for the one with the longer lifespan. So Bakrig, Bakrig Den Sukar is going to be our new scientist. And we can send him around to look at some of the, the additional neighboring systems. Same process. We're just going to hop around momentarily to see what else might be nearby. And then start surveying more earnestly in a moment. Now we have an additional construction ship, which I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I can't yet, of course, because I haven't explored. That's fine. Let's go back to speed three. And again, we're waiting on 400 minerals so that we can build that alloy foundry. Excuse me. Although, consumer goods is going to be an issue as well. I want alloys first, though. All right, traditions available. Let's go ahead and have new colonies start with one additional pop. Speaking of that, how soon can we go ahead and colonize? Yep, we need alloys. <laughs> and that's why we want them. That right there. All right, alloy foundries. Within a year or so, we will have some additional alloys coming in at the expense of some minerals. As you can see, I've gotten a little bit more practice with the, uh, <laughs> with the new building mechanics since 2.2 launched, finally. Okay, so we do have the ability to build more stations. Let's do this one at a time. All right, doesn't appear that we discovered anything in terms of colonizable worlds nearby here. Okay, hang on, let's see. Colonize, perfect. So we're gonna build a colony ship and we're gonna call this I actually kind of like uh, Mirida. Mirida works for me. So we've just ordered our very first colony already. Aha! We found an ocean world. 24 slot ocean world. Very nice. Survey right now. Then we need to survey the Trinic system. So I'm going to go ahead and send you to do that right away. Bit of an interesting approach. If you're new to Solaris, FYI, you could just as easily say... I want to survey this system, survey that one, survey that one, survey that one without doing the exploration first. It's just that if you're willing to keep an eye on it, and you have to remember to do that, I've definitely recorded some content uh, for YouTube where I've given those orders to move around and look for planets, and then I haven't actually watched them jump around like I just did to spot these two worlds. But it's a way to very quickly prioritize that, yes, you want your science ships to explore nearby systems so that you can travel to them with non-science ships, but you also want to prioritize, again, the discovery of colony worlds and as soon as you find one do a control shift click to move you know searching that system and those planets to the very front of the queue all right so we have finished our research into planetary unifications which is going to give us additional monthly unity which is very very handy we'll get traditions faster additional food from farmers is probably good to have early on yeah let's go ahead and go for that it's going to take a while our researchers are just getting started so, these things are going to take time. Alright, you build a mining station there, and then build that resource station there on Obnil 5, so we can take advantage of that mural. Meanwhile, I'm probably going to send this construction ship to Trinic, because we want to go ahead and colonize out this direction. We've got a nice little cluster of stars, which hopefully will have a few more colonizable planets in it to start out here. Alright, we're low on our energy stockpile because we've just... We're, we're getting our energy situation underway. So that's going to be a little bit problematic. One thing we can do is sell some food to get some energy back. 
I don't need huge amounts of food right now, so let's go ahead and sell a bunch. We could, of course, build additional energy production on Nelvadris, which we will certainly do. But the main reason we have this deficit is that we've got a colony ship underway. All right, traditions available. Let's see. Pop growth speed increased by 10%. I like that idea. I'm going to apply to both of our worlds. So why not? Construction project concluded. Scientists leveling up. The Vajra Starbase has finished its construction queue. That's the colony ship headed to Omnil 1. Soon System to be called Mirada. Concluded. Research concluded. What do we got? Alright, mining station output is done. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go for a coil gun. Slightly advanced weaponry. Also because that's going to unlock additional tech options if we pursue that now. And then we want those research stations built for society purposes. Good. We have some energy and minerals in Trinic. That'll help with that shortage. We're probably not going to be able to completely resolve the shortage right away. Initial colonization phase. The first Oranothi colony. Our colony ship has made a gentle splashdown in the planet-spanning ocean of Mirada, just off the shores of a large archipelago. This fertile island chain will serve as an excellent first landing site. The ship has been permanently anchored in preparation for its conversion into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement. Its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up on the island's surrounding the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first Oranathi city on an alien world. Not quite, but hey, again, can't customize everything to the lore. <laughs> All right, so let's go and build a starbase here because we need that stuff. So until this is completely set up, we will have a bit Research of an energy deficit. Concluded. And before the end of this episode, I would love to have an artifact. We'll see if we can find one. Research station output, or not an artifact, but an archaeological site. Energy credits from technicians, plus 20%, or the fusion reactor. Let's go ahead and go for the fusion reactor just so that we can have the access to better reactors for our vessels in case we need it. We might have a large number of alien races in the galaxy, or we might have a smaller number. It's randomized between 7 and 15. Hey, concluded. got a desert world out here. Why don't you go ahead and survey that, please? Not quite as good as the others, but still good. Wow, Trinic 3, what do you have? It's a carbon world, evidently. But it's not... That's interesting. So it has minerals from jobs plus 15%, but it's not a terraforming candidate. <laughs> Okie dokie. So this science ship is now doing its thing where it's just hopping around looking through this territory. The Aslund system there. That's one of the uh, construction project concluded. Systems that's been named for developers of Stellaris. Ricard is actually no longer with the project. I think he's working on that. Um, I would guess he's been working on that new game that's going to be announced at ParadoxCon this year. That would be my estimation. Construction project concluded. All right, good. Can we go ahead and build a Starbase here too? Yes, we can. Good, we have lots of influence. Once we have more influence in terms of, well, not influence, once we have more resources in terms of energy, we'll be able to fire off some edicts. We can't do map the stars right now. Ooh. System Ooh. survey Yeah, concluded. let's do that. Faster surveying, please. Sensor echoes have indicated the presence of some kind of unidentified object deep within the atmosphere of this gas giant. Research, please. Traditions available. Starbase influence costs reduced by 10%. Yep, sure. Would have been nice to have before I started building this one, but it's already started, so. C'est All right, so now that we've done a little bit more exploration here, let's go ahead and queue up some surveying. Like I said, so that we might find one of the new artifacts because they're fairly common. At least they were in the first couple of practice playthroughs that I did. Construction this project concluded. All right, let's get a research station for that physics research. Please and thanks.
I think I will go ahead and queue up a colony here as soon as I have the, oh man. Construction project concluded. Yeah, I need those consumer goods in order to do that. The ISS Tellarian has picked up a strange energy signature coming from somewhere deep inside the atmosphere of Theonis 4. It appears to originate from a structure of some kind, possibly the remains of an orbital station. But the atmospheric pressure makes it impossible to approach. Nevertheless, scans of the unique signature have yielded a, a large amount of valuable physics data. Fascinating. That's handy. All right, so why don't you come out here? We'll eventually be able to include Theonis in our territory. For better or worse, going to keep playing here until I have discovered Research concluded. an archaeological site. I was going to say anomaly, but no. Not an anomaly. Our initial scans have caught an irregular signal reminiscent of our own distress patterns. Research, please. All right, so we've got some additional food production. Finally, there we go. Let's go for a society research boost from researchers. It's a basic technology. Usually you can get those for each category just off the bat, out of the gate, right away. Not this time. Starbase built in Feonis. Now, why are you entering orbit of planet? Okay, so you were following orders. So I've given you orders to scan all that. Why don't you scan this and that, please? Construction project concluded. Done. All right, now we will have the opportunity. We have some trade value in these two systems. That will give us some additional energy. The signal we intercepted was a distress call from a ship in orbit around Hantaron 5A. The ship is not giving off any heat signatures and seems to be drifting. A special project has been issued to investigate what has happened to the crew. I'm going to say we don't have time for this because typically that event leads to horrible, horrible things. I don't want to lose a science ship right now, especially because we're trying to find that archaeological site. Construction project concluded. Let's go ahead and queue up a starport here, because we'll be able to, again, collect this trade value once Hantaron is in our territory. Anomaly send you there. Ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Hantaron system. Check it out. I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't found an artifact yet. There should be one in this initial cluster, I would think. At least one. We found plenty of anomalies, but nothing that is unique to this New play th playthrough, excuse me, just yet. All right. Administra administrative capacity increased by 20. Starbase upkeep reduced by 20. Mm. Let's go ahead and reduce Starbase upkeep. The ISS Hiramdor crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Hantaron system. The signal is a song, a complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation to be precise, and one that science officer Bagrig Den Sukar cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed the song remains unknown, though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside of our galaxy. Curious. <laughs> The narrative quality of Solaris never ceases to just blow my mind. It's good stuff. Anomaly found. Impressive structures litter a small area on the surface of Hantaron 2, practically begging for some archaeological work. Research Initial phase. colonization phase. We've established a colony of Mirida in the Obnal system, so that energy deficit is Anomaly a little bit reduced. Found. Efforts to map the surface of this moon have identified a strange mountain formation in the southern hemisphere. I know what that could be. Construction project concluded. All right, so now we are investigating a couple of different anomalies, which, honestly, the anomalies are slowing down the surveying process a little bit. We could do a third science ship, perhaps. Although we don't... Our energy income couldn't really support an additional leader at the moment. And consumer goods, as is normal for, a, for an expanding initial empire are starting to go into the negative a bit. The structures on Hantaron 2 are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground or amusement park of some sort. Science officer Bagrig Densukar notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from. 
and that to the builder's alien eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us Oranathi, it looks mostly like a place where you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. All right, so we got some research from that. Research concluded. Okay, so we have the gigantic Situation skeleton, which I knew that updated. was. Let's see. Yep, physics research from researchers. Absolutely. And we have this new starbase built. Let's go ahead and get a trade hub built on it immediately. I'm going to build one more ship here. Also give the order to upgrade those. As soon as Mirada has an option for an additional building, we'll get some consumer goods set up. Research concluded. There we are, a new archaeological site. Let's take a look at this and then we'll end this episode. An artificial construct thousands of kilometers across is readily visible from Safaban 4A's orbit. The shape seems to indicate a location of importance in the middle of it. Sensory readings from orbit indicate nothing out of the ordinary, so closer inspection is warranted. This is chapter one of a brand new archaeological site. So we have to, it looks like the difficulty is <laughs> hell plus. Each chapter in an archaeological site can have a different difficulty value. Difficulty will reduce the likelihood of getting successful results at the end of an excavation phase. So there's multiple phases. We've just discovered it. So I don't know that I'm necessarily going to look into this yet. The skill bonus will increase the likelihood of getting successful results at the end of, of an excavation phase. Maybe if we assign a different scientist, will these values change? Because the skill bonus has to be based on the scientist, right? has to be. Oh, Safaban is actually not in our territory yet, so we have to add this star. And I knew that. <laughs> Just haven't played too much with this code yet. So we're going to get that added, and in the next episode, we're going to start looking into that archaeological site that we've just discovered. Also, we have finished research in the coil gun. So let's go for additional mining station output in general. Sounds like a good idea to me. I'm going to stop this one here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes in the Legacy of the Forerunner series are going to be coming out every day at 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.